Hello everyone and welcome to the Kyle Davis vlog number 15. Now I don't know if any of you guys have noticed or not, but it has been a while since I've sat down and done a vlog. Uh, I uh, I was feeling uh, pretty sick uh, late last week, <clears throat> and uh, I, I couldn't appear on my own show, uh, you know, not feeling well. So I decided to uh, not to to do anything uh, for a few days. Uh, and then over the weekend, uh, I was, of course, at uh, the Rangers Fan Fest. Uh, so I, I had a really good time uh, there at the Arlington Convention Center. Uh, I was actually quite the the star at, at the at the Fan Fest. They had, they had an uh, event stage, and uh, they had a, a Name That Tune contest. They picked 16 people to participate, and I was one of them. And uh, they uh, did a tournament style, you know, like a like a wrestling tournament. And uh, I won my first round match. Uh, the song was uh, "I Got a Feeling." I got a feeling uh, tonight's gonna be uh, whatever that song. I got that one. And then the second round, they paired me up with a guy, probably in his mid 30s, and. Uh, and uh, I didn't get the song. If if the song would have been playing, maybe ten seconds more, I would have gotten it. But it was uh, "Born in the USA" by Bruce Springsteen. Like the song, but I don't really know it that well. Um, they also did Queen, uh, Lady Gaga, and so I, it, it was it, the, the songs that that that. Uh, that I would have got really quickly, uh, the other people got. Uh, they did play one Justin Bieber song, and I would have never gotten that. So I'm glad that, that I wasn't uh, in the Justin Bieber category. Um, so I did that, and then about an hour later, they, they did a, uh, a dance contest. The winner got a trip to spring training in Phoenix, Arizona uh, in March. And there was no way I wasn't at least going to try. And uh, and they picked uh, ten people. You had to like audition or whatever for the. Uh, they had the the Texas Rangers six shooters, which are nothing more than cheerleaders or whatever. And so you like went off to the side, and they had music playing, and you'd kind of dance in front of them or whatever. And uh, uh, whether it was just for pure entertainment value or whatever, uh, they picked me as one of the ten. And so I was on the stage. They did us one by one on the stage, and uh, and. And uh, and I I was up fourth, uh, and and yeah, it was pretty bad. They didn't boo me because that would have been rude. But it, yeah, yeah, it was worth a shot. But I didn't do well. So uh, that was fun though. Uh, there were probably uh, probably a thousand, at least a thousand people uh, there watching me. So it wasn't nerve wracking. I wasn't nervous at all. Doing what I've done for so long. Being in front of crowds, uh, making a fool of myself is nothing. So anyway, that's a quick uh, update on what I've been doing uh, the past few days. Uh, where I left off last time on my vlog was 2006. By this time, uh, uh, Tadlock uh, had uh, had gotten on the show, and uh, he he uh, he won the uncut title very quickly after he was on the show <clears throat> in uh in 2006 uh he was a heel uh, at the beginning you know the german uh nazi type deal but he turned into a face pretty quickly i attribute that to him being so friendly with the fans after the show uh that's what i think it was not that that was a bad thing but he ended up being a, a really popular face even with a German gimmick. Uh, I think he debuted, I don't know, maybe July, June, July, August of 06. I think. By that time, I was already done ring announcing on Uncut. Uh, I don't remember my last... Sh I don't remember when I stopped ring announcing. All that I know is that I was looking for a way off the show because I really wanted to get into managing. That was, you know... That was my goal other than ring announcing. Ring announcing was just uh, a phase to get there. And I remember talking to Travis Baxter, and I desperately wanted to find someone who could take over on Uncut. It's just finding a good ring announcer is tough. They don't just grow on trees. I mean, you can 
you can find a wrestler almost anywhere. You know, people want to be wrestlers all the time, but not many people want to be good ring announcers. You know, they want they might want to be ring announcers, but they don't want to be good ring announcers. And I was very hesitant on who I would pass my position on to. Uh, so I talked to Travis, and he 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 knew um, a guy named Cody Cox who he thought might be interested. And you know, I trusted Travis's uh, uh, I trusted his opinion and and whatever. So uh, we did that, and Cody took over, and and you know he, he was great. Uh, I think Cody was a better ring announcer than I was. He just I think he took to it very quickly. Uh, and that was that was in uh, May May or June of '06. Um, I I stayed behind the scenes. Uh, ran uh, I ran the backstage area uh, on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, I helped out with Fight When Survive that year. Came up with the I Suck match which essentially is an I quit match except you have to scream the words I suck and it was uh, Robert Evans against uh, Mike Fox and the whole gimmick with Evans was that he was uh, uh, you know he was all preppy or proper and he would never use those kind of words that kind of language but yeah, he said I quit and I stink and all kinds of other things and eventually he said I suck when uh, Fox had him in the career killer so uh, that's right Mike Fox we were uh, we were sitting at uh, at uh, Joe Pool Lake in Grand Prairie, and we were at um, I forget the name of the restaurant. It's on the tip of my tongue. And uh, anyway, Jackie was the waitress there, the Oasis. Jackie was the waitress there, and it was me, Tadlock, uh, Money Bags, and Richard Hill. And I had a big bowl of shrimp. I remember that. It was really good. And we're coming coming up with ideas for Fight Would Survive that year. And I came up with the idea of I suck, so I, th that was fun. Eh. And the next year, uh, I actually came up with the big, the the biggest loser match, which was Gigolo versus Evans. Uh, to win the match, you had to lose. You had to get pinned. And, and the psychology of that match was really fun. And I actually got to commentate that match. I was commentating on Full Throttle by that time, and so that was a fun match to uh to to commentate. Uh, so anyway, uh, Tadlock was really big at that time. He was managed by Paul Lewis. Uh, I uh, let's see, Macho Mike had started at that point doing the Macho Mike gimmick. Originally, I was going to be put with Macho Mike. Very first thing. I think it was going to be Macho Mike and Max Muscles and a tag team. I don't know how that was going to work, but I didn't care. I was willing to do it. Um, and then the thing with uh, LaMotta and Mike happened. Uh, Mike uh, stiffed LaMotta one too many times in the face by accident. And, uh, and, and in a really ugly and unfortunate scene, uh, LaMotta uh, uh, beat up Mike pretty bad. So he, Mike didn't have another match for a while. He was beat up pretty bad. LaMotta, uh, he was out of PCW for a little while. Eventually it all got smoothed over on all, on all parts. It was just an unfortunate incident at that time. So uh, the thing with Mike got scrapped. Max ended up leaving. And so I... Uh, a common theme began where anything that I was involved with died <laughs> uh, and that would that would continue uh, for the next couple years uh, but eventually I was put with Frankie Fisher and I was going to be uh, coach Kyle Davis uh, complete with a sweatsuit and a whistle and the coach sunglasses and uh, the the first uh, time I ever managed at PCW uh, was uh, with Frankie Fisher against SB1 in September 2006. And that is where I will begin my next vlog. Uh, September 2006, uh, I began my managerial tenure with the Schoolhouse Rockers. And believe it or not, it wasn't as great as it sounds. I enjoyed it. But it was just a stepping stone to many, many other things happening. Tune in next time for the birth of Coach Kyle Davis and the hilarity that would ensue.